Hi everyone, it's Katya. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to have you here. For all of you guys who are brand new to my channel, welcome. I cannot wait to share some inspiration with you. And two of the cards you see on screen right now are the two that I wanna share with you. So I'm using a couple of different alcohol inks here. So I'm using a couple of pinatas and I do use the Adirondack alcohol ink by Tim Holtz. Um, I don't use all the inks that you see here on the screen, but I do use a couple of them. I'm also using some medium weight Yupo paper that I had in my stash. And to be quite honest, I haven't really used it, so this will be a fun try for me to see what this does. I'm also using gloves to protect my fingers from the inky mess. And here are a variety of glass dishes and bowls and votives that I'm using to create the bubble type effect on my project. So that's a juice glass, and then this last one is a spice jar. So before I rip out a piece of paper from this Yupo paper pad, I also wanted to mention I'm going to be using this turkey baster. Yes, you heard that right. I'm using a turkey baster because I had it in my stash, and I thought, you know what, why not? It has this little air blower. I can use that to blow the ink around. And in that green jar, I am using a combination of alcohol, just straight 99% rubbing alcohol as well as a little bit of glycerin to sort of mimic uh, a medium that you would use to help spread the ink around. And in essence, guys, it's basically a DIY alcohol blending solution. Do I have a recipe? No, but if you go on to YouTube, if you can't go out to the store and buy an ink blending solution on your own, due to the crackdown and everybody trying to stay at home, you can make this yourself if you just have some alcohol, 99% isopropyl alcohol, and some glycerin. So if you YouTube and check on recipes for that, you can make it yourself for pennies on the dollar so it's a little bit more budget friendly. So before I get carried away on what I'm doing here on the screen, I wanna let you know, please, please, if you try this, make sure that you have a door open, windows open, plenty of ventilation to make sure that you don't pass out like I almost did. At some point I shut the fit the camera off from recording because I realized, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm getting high from these fumes. So you want to make sure you have plenty of ventilation so that you don't get um, intoxicated by all the fumes going on. Um, because it can be completely addictive, uh, but you want to make sure that you have proper ventilation so that you can work and have fun, but also make sure that you're protecting your lungs, all that kind of good stuff. So in between adding the different types of alcohol ink products, I'm also using that fun little turkey baster. Yes, it's working, um, but it's not working the way I want. So I added more of my DIY blending solution to really get that ink moving. So since I started recording this video, I have a brand new camera set up and I wanna apologize in advance because at some point I'm gonna be speeding up parts of the video so that I don't get you guys sick to your stomach because my camera along with me putting a fan to get the fumes out of the room I put a little fan to blow on the air surface area where I was working and I realized after playing it back that it was causing a little bit of a wave feature in the video but I really wanted to share this whole video process with you to see to show you guys how I created this whole card panel. Now I have to be honest with you because I have not really tried different techniques with the alcohol inks on Yupo paper. When I added the blending solution, I literally got carried away by watching that ink move all over the place because I was mesmerized by how it moves, what patterns it creates, etc. that it almost forgot to start putting on the glasses and the glass um, jars and bowls and stuff you see on the left. I almost forgot to put those down on my project. Now the reason why those glass jars and bowls and votives and the spice jar that I'm using, the reason why those are fun is because they create really, really unique looks on alcohol ink because everybody's done a lot of different alcohol ink techniques. But this one I found especially cool because if you search the term alcohol ink bubbles or bubble art using alcohol inks, you will see that some artists actually use some really, really cool effects by creating what look like actual bubbles in your alcohol ink. And I took it a different look and a different step by actually using gold foil on mine, but you can see some artists who actually take the exact same method that I'm doing here 
on this Yupo paper, and they use a white metallic type pen to create what looks like bubbles on your project. So what I'm doing is around those glass jars, bowls, and spice jar, I'm just adding extra ink and combining it with the blending solution, blowing the air around. So the goal is to kind of sort of create like a shadow or some type of definition around the area or underneath where those glass jars and items are. So you'll see, I'm going to start to blow the ink around and I sped this part up because this is when I realized that the screen was getting shaky and I so apologize to everyone. I, I just didn't want to not shoot this video and uh, provide it to you. So I'm also trying to help speed up the ink to dry by taking my heat tool. So I'm blowing that around and you'll see me add more ink where I think it needs more, that sort of thing. There's no rhyme or reason to this type of art, right? You just do what looks pretty to your eye and you go with it. So the ink that's trapped under each underneath each one of those glass bowls, votives, everything, those st are still wet. So you can see right here, I'm drying what's there, but look at that cool ring that it leaves behind. It's so cool. I love this art. I think it's just amazing. And then I'm just lifting up that next one and you'll see me do that as well. And then I'll lift up the other ones too. And you'll see sort of like a ring and some sort of like a bubble image. And that's what's really cool is it leaves different types of images on your project. So you don't just get that muddled ink all over the place with random art. You can get some bubbles and circles, which I think look really, really cool. So again, like I told you, I apologize if I'm making everybody sick with the camera work. I will learn this and get better at it, I promise. But I wanted to give you a little bit better of a close-up to show you what those circles look like with the rings so that they can really emphasize how different that ink spreads across the Yupo paper. If you put a glass object, and you don't even have to use glass, I've seen some artists use those plastic cups. The reason why you want something a little heavy is so that it doesn't go sliding around because this is a pretty slick surface but anyway you get the general idea you could also use if you used something plastic you could also put something heavy on top to weigh it down so that it doesn't slide around okay so here's where I stepped it up and decided I wanted to try something kind of fun and different as I told you before there are some artists who will actually take a white sharpie type marker and actually create what look like bubbles in the circles that you see on the screen. Well, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to take some gold foil and foil this area? So I take this piece of parchment paper that you see on the screen and I cut it down so that it's just a little bit larger than the paper that you see where my art project is. And I wanted it not to be so big because I'm going to be lifting it up repeatedly when I put the foil down. And I'm going to be using those We Are Memory Keepers foil quill freestyle pens. I don't know if you guys have seen those or tried them, but oh my gosh, I've had so much fun using these and they are so terrific. So wait till you see what I do. So the reason I'm using parchment paper is for two reasons. Number one, the art project that you see down below that has a little piece of tape on it is to keep that steady so it doesn't move around because it's slick paper and I need to make sure it stays secured when I do the gold foil. The reason I'm putting the parchment paper on is for two reasons. Number one, so that I can trace those circles and know exactly where I need to put that foil because right when I put that foil on top of my art project, there's no way I'll be able to see where to trace. So what I do here is I take that parchment paper and I tape it down right over my project and I'm going to be taking a pencil and just tracing those circles by putting the glass right on top and tracing them just so I can see and know exactly where to put my gold foil uh, pens before I trace. The second reason is that parchment paper is really going to help flatten and keep that foil paper in place and make it a little bit easier to trace on top of Sometimes when I'm tracing with foil paper or trying to create a foil embellishment by using any type of heat on it, that foil paper has a tendency to curl up and move, but this parchment relief paper really helps keep it in place. So the easiest thing for me to do here is to put those glasses right back on top of the bubbles that I see. And what, what's nice about the parchment paper is I can see directly right through it to see exactly where they need to go. So 
you know, kind of like a, a numbskull here. I tried to put all of them down and trace them all at once. Okay, that's not going to work. So then I just started with one. And for whatever reason, this pen was not putting out the amount of ink. So I wound up switching just directly to a pencil. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't even matter what color you use here. You just want to be able to trace this onto the parchment paper so that you can see exactly where to put your gold foil and your pen so that you can mark around it. So I sped this part of the video up so that I can show you specifically how I worked through this process of tracing each one of those glass objects onto the parchment paper. And notice how I keep pressing the parchment paper down because I kind of want it to be right in the area where those circles are. So tracing around with a pencil because I really wanted to be able to lift up that parchment paper and see exactly where I need to put that gold foil. So now I have all of those glass jars and bowls and cups completely traced and you can see the outline. I can see them perfectly on my parchment paper. And now I'm going to be using this foil quill freestyle pen. This is the broad tip. And I will tell you that off camera I heat this up so that it's nice and hot before I bring it to my project because that's what you need to use with this gold activated foil or heat activated foil I should say and it's the foil that came with the product itself to try so I just used what I had on hand and this worked really cool um, but I did learn some lessons along the way and I wanted to share my pain points with you so that if you do decide to go this route and give this project a try that you can learn from me so you'll see me heat up the pen and bring it to the paper and put it uh, put the gold foil underneath this parchment paper and trace everything but I do it with the glass and I don't recommend that because it doesn't work very well what I'm going to recommend that you do is use the tracing as a starting point but then tracing over the circle with your pen without the glass object there to get in the way because these pens don't really work well if you put them or tip them on an angle they work really best to direct to paper um, the parchment paper is not an impact it doesn't cr it doesn't prevent the foil from sticking as you'll see what does prevent the foil from attaching to your project is tilting your pen at an angle so these have sort of like a rounded curved edge but they are meant to be written with or applied with um, using uh, top down so basically holding your pen in an up and down motion rather than a slant like you would normally use to write with a pencil so to demonstrate my point a little bit further do you see how i'm sort of slightly angling that pen well that pen is actually creating a really fine line because it's got a very sharp edge to it so these pens are definitely sort of um, made so that you work with them so that they completely sit vertical in your hand and what I mean by that is they should be in an upward and downward motion so I'm going to lift the project here so you can see a little bit better and yes it does work but it's not as much of a bold impression that I really wanted um, and I'll zoom in just a little bit here so you can kind of get a better look here. Um, so here we go, just a little bit better. So you can see the foil is on there, but not as bold as I would have hoped. Um, and I sort of kind of get the hang of it and I wind up using that foil quill pen with the parchment paper on top and I don't use the glass as a tracing means. I just sort of freehand it. So I'm going to speed up this process here to show you kind of like what process I went through to get all of that foil uh, adhered to the project here because it really turns out cool. Um, you'll see me trace around a glass and I'm like, oh, that's still not bold enough. I want more gold. Then I try this again with this glass thinking, well, maybe the edge of this is a little bit different and I'll get better results. But again, I'm turning that pen too far on its side to get the results I want. So I wind up basically just tracing the circles without using the glasses and the votives, etc. period. And you'll see that come to fruition here in just a second. But it turns out a little bit better when I do it freestyle on my own without the glass at all. So here you go. I'm going to trace that and this isn't real time because I've sped this part up but I'm not going super slow you just want to get enough heat and impression down onto that project so that you can transfer that foil onto the project and this one worked really really well and I go a couple of times and I love the end result so in addition to tracing the outside lines of the circles I also decided to sort of form lines where those bubbles sort of have those different colors 
that were merging in places to kind of make them look like a globe. I just thought that was so cool, so I decided to add foil in those areas too, and I freestyled those. I didn't use any glass votives or jars or cups or anything, and look at the final results. There's just enough gold to show those different outlines, and I just thought this turned out super, super pretty. So here's a look at one port portion, and I cut this down into four panels to be on an A2 size card. But look at how cool these turned out. I'm so happy with them. I will definitely try different colors. That is when I recover from the fumes that are still in my nose. Just kidding. Um, but no, these turned out great. I can't wait to turn them into cards. So I got four card panels, but I just created two cards. One says awesome, the other one says hugs. And I just accented them with some gold dyes and letters to um, complement the cards with the color scheme. So I hope you like these. I hope you give this technique a try. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you're new if you're new here and just stopping in for the first time. And don't forget to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below which one of these cards is your favorite and what you'd like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by. Ciao for now.